All right, so here we are. We are in section 5.4. We're dividing polynomials. Let's start with just dividing plain numbers one more time. We did the end of last time. Let's do it again real quick. So how do you divide just plain old numbers? Of course, you'd use your calculator, but I mean, without a calculator, you know, by hand. Remember what you do. Uh, a fraction means division, and specifically, it means the bottom number into the top number, doesn't it? That's what a fraction means. Just like 10 divided by 2 is 5 because 2 goes into 10 five times, doesn't it? So I want to make sure we're all clear. A fraction means long division, bottom into top, doesn't it? Okay, so, and so then how do we carry that out? How do we, what are the steps involved in putting 21 into 8469? Do you look at the whole 8469 and just think, I don't know, how many 21s and 8,400, a lot, a lot of them, I guess. No, we don't do that, do we? We don't think about the whole 8,469. What do we think about it first? What's that? Beautiful. Just the front, huh? Just, just what we can do, huh? Just the 21 into the 84. Yeah, just the front part. We don't worry about the whole 8,000, whatever. We just look at the front. We just say, hmm, what could I put up here? What times 21? How many times will 21 go into 84? What times 21 will be 84? Answer is? What times 21 is 84? Four. Four, right, exactly. So we don't, don't be shy. You know it. You got it. Four, and so we go four. And now that four, whatever we write up there, it multiplies both of them, huh? It doesn't just multiply the two, and that's important because the same thing when we get to the x's in a minute. So just mul I'm, just, I'm doing this so that the x's make more sense, just reminding you what you... Maybe it's been a while since you were younger, huh? Maybe, uh, I don't know, so it's elementary school or something that you long divided you know, numbers by hand like this. So you go like that, right, and then you subtract. These are gone, then you bring down, and then you keep on going. All right, so I just want to remind you generally how it works. Let's get to the actual question they have for us. So in 5.4, question number one, they have, they um, give us minus 8x to the third, minus 26x squared, minus 31x, minus 14, divided by 4x plus 3. All right, so um, what, how does this work? Again, a fraction means long division, doesn't it? It means bottom into the top. So we write it as a long division problem. The bottom, 4x plus 3, into the top, minus 8x to the third, minus 26x squared, minus 31x, minus 14. There we go. So we, first thing we do is write it as a long division problem, and now we start cranking it out. Now, where do we look? We don't worry about the whole thing at once, do we? Just like when we did the numbers, we don't have to worry about the whole thing at once. We just look where? Front and front. So that'll be a theme you'll see. We're always just looking front to front. And we're saying, what, what could I put up here? What, what up here times the front will match the front? Does that make sense? What times 4x will exactly match minus 8x to the third? Like same sign, same everything, identical match. And remember how the multiplying of letter number things works. Out front numbers multiply, powers add, don't they? Out front numbers multiply, powers add. So what do I have to put up there to make that happen? Yeah, good. 2x squared, huh? 2x squared, so 2x squared, and that 2x squared will go bonk, bonk, and it'll hit both of them. It distributes with both of them, doesn't it? Just, just like when I did the numbers a minute ago, that 4 hit the 2 and the 1, didn't it? It's the same thing with letters. Oh, you're right, negative. My mistake, negative. You're right, because it's got to make an exact match. Good job. It's got to be the same. So that negative 2x squared, so the out front numbers multiply powers add, so negative 2 times 4 is negative 8, and the invisible 1 power and the 2 power, x to the third, and then minus 6x squared. Like that. We good there? Good to there, and now what are we going to do from here? Well, subtract, huh? 
That's what we, that's what we do next, right? Just, just like back here with the numbers, right? We subtract, and then you bring down the remainder. So we have to subtract. Now, we talked about what's the easiest way to subtract, like, letter number things? Add the opposite. Remember that? Because well, now you might, maybe if I'm helpful to you, I could say this. Say, well, you know, if you were, we're going to subtract, but it's really hard to think of subtracting a negative. Do you see why we do that? It's, it, yeah, enough said. Let's, to subtract, the easier way to subtract is to add the opposite. Do you know what I mean by that? Like if I wanted to go 7 minus 3, which is 4, instead I could go 7 plus negative 3. Same answer. It's the same thing, isn't it? Adding the opposite of 3 is the same thing as subtracting 3, isn't it? So that's what we're going to do because adding is easier than subtracting. So instead of subtracting, let's add the opposite. So, so instead, you let that minus go, boom, make that plus, and, and then hit the other one, boom, and then add. Does that make sense? We're going to we're gonna add. I let, I let that minus sign distribute in here and here to change both those signs. The new sign is plus, the new sign is plus. Does that make sense? I changed... All, it distributed, that minus sign distributed through the parentheses. You can put parentheses there if that's helpful. Because I'm subtracting that whole line. So when you, sub, yeah, maybe I should just say it that way. If you subtract a whole line, you change it. Yeah, maybe, let me just say it that way. I don't need all this mysterious talk. We're subtracting. We're subtracting that whole bottom line. What does a minus do in front of a whole group? Boom, boom. Hits them both, doesn't it? Distributes to both of them. Makes it plus, makes it plus. So now we have, now let's finish up the problem. We have minus 8x cubed and plus 8x cubed, right? That was changed. So that's just zero. Next, we have minus 26x squared and plus, it's now plus, huh? Plus 6x squared. So if you lose $26 and gain back 6, where are you at? If you lose 26 and gain, you remember it's plus 6. We gain back 6. If you lose $26 but then get 6 back, you lost 20, right? See how this new sign is plus on the 6x squared? We lost 26 and gained back 6. Does that make sense? Okay there. And then bring down the other 2. Right, just bring down the minus 31x, bring down the, the minus 14. Sometimes in long division, we bring them down just one at a time, but it actually doesn't matter. Just bring them all down. It's all good. Does that make sense there in that first step? Let's do it again. Now, the zero in the front, just get rid of it. We don't care about it. Next step. So we're going to put something up here that's going to multiply and multiply... And where are we looking? Front and front. It's always front and front. Front and front. So what can I put up there times the front times the 4x that will exactly match, same sign, same everything, the negative 20x squared. Out front numbers multiply powers add. What's it going to be? Negative 5x. Right. Is that making sense for everybody? So if I make this right here, negative 5x, then that negative 5x times 4x will be negative 20x squared. See an exact match? See how it exactly matched that negative 20x to the x squared? Because the invisible 1 power and 1 power added. And then the negative 5x times 3, negative 15x. And now what do we do? Draw our line and subtract the whole bottom line. How do you subtract the whole bottom line? That minus needs to distribute, doesn't it? Needs to hit both those. So the minus will hit here, make it plus, and the minus will hit here, make it plus. You see how we're subtracting the whole bottom line, changes all the signs? All right, so what's going to happen? So the first one we got minus 20x squared plus 20x squared, zero. That's always going to happen because we made them exactly the same at first and then the subtraction changed the sign, so they're always going to be opposites and going to be zero, aren't they? That's a good sign that we're on track. What's, what's happening in the next one? 
minus 31x plus 15. So if you lose $31 but gain back 15, just do it in calculator real quick if you need to. What's it going to be? Negative 16x. And then just bring down the negative 14. Get rid of the zero. One more step. What do I put back up here? Where am I looking? Front and front. That's always where my eye needs to go. What times the front will match the front? Negative four. Yeah, same sign, same everything. Right. Negative four. So that negative four will, will go to the first one, right? Let me get rid of these here. The negative four will go boom and boom. So negative four times 4x is negative 16x, and negative four times three is negative 12. Is that good to there? Now what do we do at this point? Subtract. We're going to subtract that whole bottom line, which means change all the signs. Huh? So it goes boom, makes that plus, and boom, makes that plus. These cancel zero every time. And the other spot, if you lose $14, but then plus 12, gain back 12, where's your bank account at? Negative 2. Get rid of the zero. We don't care about that. That's the remainder, isn't it? Negative 2 is the remainder. So the answer is, let me put this back where it was here. So they're going to ask us for the quotient. And the quotient is that right up here at the top. Minus 2x squared minus 5x minus 4. And then they'll say, and what's the remainder, please? And the remainder is the negative 2. And we're done. It's a little painful. Does it make sense? Step. It's 1x or just x. It's good either way. And then it multiplies both those. Remember, out front numbers multiply, powers add, huh? So 1x times 2x squared. 2 times 1 is 2, and the powers, the invisible 1 and 2 add to be 3. Exact match. Same sign, same everything. Perfect. But then he also multiplies the 5 plus 5 times 1 is 5x. Good there. And now we draw our line, and what do we do? Subtract. So what is that minus sign going to do when you subtract the whole bottom line? It's going to distribute and hit them both. Yeah, it's going to hit here, make this negative. Hit here, make this negative. Right? Because you're subtracting the whole bottom line. So that minus needs to distribute to both those, and then what do you have? You have 2x cubed minus 2x cubed. Zero. Remember how we always get zero in the front? That, that's great. That'll always happen because we made them exactly the same at first, and then the minus changed its sign, so those will always be zero. How about the next one? Minus 12x squared minus, now minus, 5x. Oh, they can't combine, can they? Yeah, this one's a little different, isn't it? Notice those are not like terms. Where should I, I should slide that minus 5x down to who it matches? This guy. Yeah, so this one's a little different. They're giving us a term in there that doesn't match. See how they, um, yeah, we're skipping some terms. So this one's a little more complex. So it moves on down there, minus 5x. And so what do you do with the minus 12x? Or just bring it on down. And then 7x minus 5x plus 2x, and then bring down the minus 28. Get rid of the zero in the front, and you're ready for step two. So what's the second step? What, what are we going to put up there? What times the front will match the front? Yeah, minus 6. Beautiful. Perfect. Minus 6. That's exactly it. So minus 6. And then that minus 6 will go boom, boom, won't it? And so minus 6 times 2x squared will make minus 12x squared. See how that's an exact match for the front? Same sign, same everything, perfect. And then minus 6 times 5 will be minus 30. Where do I write that minus 30? Should I put it here? Yeah, under the negative 28 because you've got to have like terms with like terms. See how everything has their own column? Like that. Okay, and now what do we do? Because we're going to subtract, huh? We draw our line and we subtract. And when you subtract, you know what's going to happen. It's going to go boom, 
and make that plus, and boom, and make that plus, because you're subtracting the whole bottom line, which changes all the signs. All right, now what do we have? Tw minus 12x squared and plus 12x squared, that's zero every time. That's perfect. That's what, what happens. Bring down the plus 2x and minus 28 plus 30 plus 2. And get rid of that zero. Now, can we do another step? No, we're actually done. That's actually all remainder this time. It's a little weird. Now, how do you know? Well, because um, what could you possibly put up here? Yeah, and do you see that nothing's going to work with the x squared power? Anything times 2x squared, like even if you just put a number or whatever, it's, it's going to be 2x squared. It's going to have an x squared. It can't match x to the first. Regular x, can it? So, so we're just done. All of that is our remainder. So your remainder doesn't have to just be a number. It can actually have an x in it. So on this question then, we're, we're done. The quotient is the top, which is just x minus 6, right? x minus 6. And the remainder is the uh, 2x plus 2. 2x plus 2. Does everybody see it? Do you see why we're done there and how we know we can't take another step? There's nothing we could write up here, right? What could you ever put there? times 2x squared that would become the same as 2 regular x. No way. Anything times 2x squared is going to be x squared, isn't it? It's not going to match a regular x. So that's our remainder. Good. So that's what they write at first. And, uh, but we know that we need to rewrite that, huh? So we rewrite it. Um, th think about it. If it's confusing for you in that format, let me help out. What if somebody said, by just putting numbers, what if somebody said 10 divided by 2? You, you know that means 2 goes into 10, huh, five times, right? So the one on the right goes on the outside, and the other guy goes inside, huh? That's what I do whenever I'm looking at some form, I'm not sure. I just go, what, what would I do with normal numbers? Oh, yeah, I would do that. So that means the x minus 3 goes over here on the outside, and inside goes x cubed plus x squared minus 10x minus 6. Like that. We good there? And then we start cranking it out. I'll let you go for it. So we're going we're gonna to say, okay, what do we put up here times the front that will match the front? What times x makes x cubed? x squared. x squared. So x squared, and then that x squared will go to both, huh? So you get x cubed and minus 3x squared. Good to there. Now, what do we do? Subtract. And remember how this, this is where you got to be really, the main thing that people mess up is the signs. Just be really, really cautious with your signs. So I'm going to subtract the whole bottom line. What, is, what, what happens when you subtract a big group? The minus distributes to everybody, huh? So the minus is going to come in here and boom right there. Come in here and make this into plus, won't it? Everybody see that? And now th these just make zero. The front is always just zero. But what, what is this one going to be here? This is plus 1x squared plus 3x squared. So positives are like gaining money, and negatives are like losing money. So you gain 1x squared and gain 3 more x squared. What's the net result? Gain 4x squared. Good? And then we bring down the minus 10x and the minus 6, and we're ready for step 2. Step where do, we, where do we look for the next step? We just say what times the front will match the front. Remember, you don't have to look at everything. It's just front and front, huh? What times the front will match the front. What times x will make plus 4x squared? Same sign, same everything. What will do that? Plus 4x. Yeah, we good? And so now, let's get this out of the way. Now, this plus 4x goes boom, 
Boom. Plus 4x times x. Plus 4x squared. Minus 12x. We good there? And draw your line and subtract the whole bottom line. How do you subtract a whole group? The minus distributes, doesn't it? That's the main thing that gets people is the signs. Everybody seeing how that works? So you just multiply, write them down, and then you minus the whole group because you're subtracting the whole bottom line, aren't you? So that minus goes boom, making this negative, and boom, making this positive. I just circle the new signs to be more clear what the new signs are, whatever works for you. So 4x squared minus 4x squared, 0, gonzo. Um, negative 10x plus 12x. If you lose 10, neg negatives are losses, positives are gains. If you lose 10 and gain back 12, where's your bank account at? Plus 2x. Good? Minus 10 plus 12. You lose $10 and gain back 12. All right. Last step. So what times the front will match the front? Two. Just two. Huh? All we need is two. Yeah. Yeah. Plus two. That plus two <clears throat> will go boom and boom. Plus two times x is plus two x. Plus two times minus three is minus six. Look at that. It's a match. You're done. That means there's no remainder. If you, I'll, I'll do the formalities if you want. But I'm telling you, once you get an exact match, exact match, you're done. No remainder. Here, here's the formalities. Draw the line. Do the parentheses. Subtract the whole bottom line. So what's going to happen? Boom. Negative. Boom. Positive. Negative 2x and now, I'm, I'm sorry, positive 2x and negative 2x, zero. Negative 6 and positive, zero. See what I mean? It's just always going to be zero. You don't have to do that stuff. As soon as they're an exact match, when you subtract changes all the signs, it's going to be zero, isn't it? Of course. So that means we have no remainder on this one. This is a zero remainder question. So the quote, so they're asking us on, on this, so they're saying, what's the answer on this one? And it's just this, isn't it? It's x squared plus 4x plus 2. No remainder needed on that one. Are we good? Just getting comfortable and easy for you? Questions I can answer. Let's redo this problem. I'm going to redo the same problem. I'm going to get the same exact answer. <coughs> Excuse me. But I'm going to do it with a shortcut method. So let's redo the same exact question. So here we go again. So number three redo with the shortcut, which is called synthetic division. Synthetic. What does synthetic mean? Whenever, whenever something is synthetic, what does that mean? It's what? Fake. Beautiful. Perfect. Exactly. It's fake. It's not real. So this is fake division. It's like we're dividing, but not really dividing, right? If something is synthesized, it's made in a lab, it's not real, right? It's synthetic. It's fake. Exactly. So we're going to do kind of fake division here. So um, here we go. So I'm going to redo the problem. What was it? It was, um, it was x cubed plus x squared minus 10x minus 6 divided by x minus 3, right? All right. Here we go. Here's how you do the fake division. You're going to like this. It's super quick and easy. You just make this big old bar-like thing. And you take this number that, that's right here. This, this goes on the outside right here, right? But instead of writing the whole x minus 3, kind of looks like upside down long division, right? I put the bar on the bottom. Instead of writing x minus 3, you actually write out here plus 3. You take this and you put the opposite. Opposite sign. So if, so if they had given me, if we were dividing by x plus 3, I would have put minus 3 there. Does that make sense? If I was dividing by x minus 4, I'd put plus 4. 
If it was x minus 7, I'd put plus 7. If it was uh, plus 3, I'd put minus 3, etc. You just put the opposite, just the number. You don't need, we're not going to use x's at all. That's why it's kind of fake, synthetic division. Just the numbers, okay? And now, you take the numbers in front of this thing, which is 1, 1, negative 10, negative 6, and you just write them down. 1, 1, negative 10, negative 6, just like that. No x's, just the numbers. 1, 1, negative 10, negative 6. This is... Synthetic division. All right. Now, here's how it goes. There's a process. You take this first number and you just bring it down. And then you take what's out here and you multiply. Three times one? Three. Just three. And you write it right there. It's plus three, right? Three, positive three times one is positive three. You write it, you multiply, you write it right there, and then you add these. One plus three, four. And then you do it again. What, what, what do I mean do it again? You take this and you multiply. So you just keep taking that number on the outside and multiplying the stuff on the bottom. Three times four, positive three times four, positive twelve. And you write it right there. See how it just swoops like that? And then what am I going to do with the minus 10 and the 12? Combine them, add them. So if you, yeah, if you lose $10 but you gain back 12, where's your bank account? Plus 2. Is it good? Then you do it again. So I'm going to grab this 3 and go times 2, 3 times 2. Plus 6, add those up, 0. That last spot, let me put a line right here to separate that last spot. This is your remainder, which we just did this problem, and the remainder indeed was 0, wasn't it? We had no remainder. Okay, great, I see all that, that's the remainder, but where's my answer? Where's my answer? Do you see it? It's here, here, and here. Well, how do you know where to start? Well, you go plus 2, and then this goes 4x, and this is, goes up a higher power, 1x squared. 1x squared plus 4x plus 2, that's, you just put the x's back in, that's the answer. Let's go look at it, is that right? x squared plus 4x plus 2. x squared plus 4x plus 2. There it is. Same answer without messing with all those x's. Synthetic division, false division, fake division. Same answer. Do you see how you write that final answer? The last spot is the remainder, zero remainder. The other spots, um, you know, just starts, you know, x squared, x, no x. It always ends with the no x. So you can just kind of go backwards if you want. No x, x to the first, x squared, you know, if there was more, it would be x cubed, etc. Just goes in order. Questions I can answer on that one? Same exact answer. Much quicker, right? Let's try it. So that's, that's the way we're going to do it for the rest, rest of the way. Let's try number four here. So number four says x squared plus 11x plus 29 over x plus 3. Let's do it by synthetic. They actually say to use long division, but we're going to cheat. We're just going to use synthetic. Synthetic division. So go ahead and just do it by synthetic division. So that means you're going to put the, the bar thing, the kind of the upside down bar thing. So yes, yeah, so you take this plus 3, and we do minus 3 because it's always opposite. So we'll do that. And then on the inside, what, what do you put? So you, you put them on the top row up here, the coefficients, right? The 1, the 11, and the 29. You put them in the top. Remember that? So just bring that 1 straight down. 
and then start your multiplying. And write the answer right there. Uh, three negative, negative three times one is negative three. We good? Everybody see where I'm at so far? This making sense? So I just, I took the number we're dividing by, x plus three, and put the opposite, minus three, put the coefficients in the top, just bring down the first one, and then minus three times one, minus three, add those up. 11 minus three eight. is eight. And now, next step, let's uh, grab the minus three, and you multiply minus three times eight. Minus 24. 29 minus 24. Five. Now, section off that last number. Remember how we did that in the last problem? We sectioned off, and that's the remainder. That last one is the remainder. So this is a five remainder. We do have a remainder this time. This is a five remainder. Okay, so what's the other stuff then? Well, the first spot, the eight, that's just a number. And then the next spot has x to the first power. If there was another spot, x squared, x cubed, you know, it just keeps going up, up, up. Does that make sense? So the, so the last spot is the remainder, and then number, x to the first, and if there was more, x squared, x cubed, etc. So it's just number and x to the first power. So the answer then, the answer is x plus 8, remainder 5. X plus 8, remainder 5. Division. All right, give that a try by synthetic division. I want to call your attention to something on the top here. See how there's no x to the first power? See how it skips a beat there? It's just zero. So make sure when you set up, you have a zero because you, you need to represent every spot. So when they skip a spot, you put a zero when you set up your synthetic division. I'll give you a second to figure out what I've been there with y'all. So we um, put our thing here. What goes on the outside? Positive five, because it's always opposite. Positive five. Okay, now let's bring down the coefficients. Now remember when you do so, get them one time. So one, next comes minus six. Now, the, the next one is missing, so it's 0 and then 20. So everybody see that? Because you can't skip a beat as far as the powers, right? This is x cubed, x squared, x to the first, no x. Well, they're missing the regular x, aren't they? So that means really there's 0 x, and you have to fill that in. So if they ever skip a power, you've got to realize that really means there's 0 of those things. All right, take it from there. You know the first step is just to bring down the 1 and begin. So we multiply 5 times 1, and then we write it right there. 5, positive 5, right? And then we add those up. So if you lose $6 and gain back 5, where's your bank account? Negative 1? Good. All right, next step, we're going to multiply again. So f positive 5 times negative 1. Negative 5, we good? And then 0 minus 5. Negative 5. Good there, last step. Positive 5 times negative 5. Negative 25. And if you gain 20 and lose 20, 20 minus 25... Minus 5. And remember, section off that last uh, column. This is the remainder, isn't it? So this is the remainder. And then working your way backwards, uh, this is minus 5. It's just a number. The next spot is x to the first power, and the next spot is x squared. So our answer is x squared, 1x squared minus 1x minus 5, remainder negative 5. Like that. That's what we would get if we did the whole long division thing. All right, so I'll bring it on down. So we take that minus 3, we do the opposite. So it's plus 3, right? And then we just bring down the coefficients. This is 1 minus 1 
minus 5 minus 1. And then we bring down the first 1, and we start going. We multiply. 3 times 1 is 3. We write it right there, plus 3, huh? Then we add them up. Minus 1 plus 3 is plus 2. We do the next one. 3 times 2 is plus 6. Add them up. Plus 1. Do the next one. Plus 3 plus 1. Oops. I'm going to do a multiply there. So multiply. So 3 times 1 is plus 3. Like that. And then add them up. The last one, what is that going to be? Uh, 2 plus 2. So that's the remainder, the last, the last column is your remainder column. And then for the other numbers, I'll bring them down, you just start, the first one's just so this remainder, remainder, it's just, 1 is just a number, and then x, and then x squared. Right? So there's the remainder, and then number x, x squared, etc. Those are all positive. So there's our answer. X squared plus 2x plus 1, remainder 2. Questions on that one? It's getting easy. So synthetic division. We take the opposite. Put it out there. Plus 5. So the opposite of minus 5 is plus 5. And then we just bring down the coefficients. So this is 1. This is minus 6. And notice it's missing the uh, x to the first power, isn't it? So we got to put in a 0. You guys catching that now? It's missing x to the first power. See how there's x, so it must be 0x to the first power? Because really all the terms are there. If it's not showing one of them, it's a 0. All right. So now we bring down the 1, and away we go. You multiply. Five, positive 5 times 1 is positive 5. If you lose $6 and gain back 5, you're down 1, huh? Negative 1. And then bring this over here. Multiply. 5 times negative 1. Negative 5. Add them up. 0 minus 5 is... Minus 5. I forgot to put that there like that. Yeah. And then third one, 5 times negative 5, negative 25. And that is our last one. That's positive 3. That's our remainder. So then the answer is 1x squared minus x minus 5 remainder 3. So last one, number 8, x to the 4th, plus 5x cubed, minus 11x, plus 24 over, x plus 4. All right, let's do it. Okay, so we grab the plus 4. And we do opposite, so that'll be minus 4. And then we bring down the coefficients, 1x to the 4th, 5x cubed. And then th it must be 0x squared. So any, anything that's missing, fill it in with a 0. So we have x to the 4th, x to the 3rd, but we're missing x squared. And then we have regular x and the, just the number. So there's a 0x squared, minus 11x, and plus 24, huh? We good there? See how that's set up? We're just missing the 0x squared. So now, let's bring down the 1, and let's multiply. Negative 4 times 1? Negative 4. Negative 4. Add them up, and that's going to be a positive 1, isn't it? And then next, negative 4 multiplied by positive 1 is negative 4. 0 and minus 4, minus 4. Next one, negative 4 times negative 4 plus 16. 16 minus 11, 5. 
last one, negative four times positive five, negative 20. This is the last column, 24 minus 20 is four. And so that's our remainder. And the other ones are our answers. So we'll have five. This will be minus four x. This will be one x squared. And this must be one x cubed. So our answer is this remainder four. X, one x cubed plus one x squared minus four x plus five. Remainder four. There it is.